Good morning, Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr. and the St. John's family, we thank all who came out to the drive-by yesterday. A special thank you to all the volunteers. We're blessed and grateful for your dedication to make our Saturday drive-bys a great event. St. John's Vacation Bible School will be the third week in August. Additional details will be shared in the coming weeks. Summer concerts are back here at St. John's. Join us every Friday evening in July for a free outdoor concert. Bring family and friends to enjoy a night of great music and fellowship. St. John's is excited to host an outdoor church service during the summer months. The date and time will be announced shortly. We have an amazing program for our seniors, Seniors in Technology. This will be a four-week class covering different aspects of technology. Learn how to use your personal devices and keep up with the fast-paced digital world. Topics will include how to use laptops, desktops, getting comfortable with mobile devices, communication through social media, and virtual communication such as Zoom and other platforms, as well as protecting yourself from online threats. Classes will be Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. beginning July 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th in the Fellowship Hall. We look forward to seeing you. Join us every Sunday morning in July and August at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let's gather and study the Word together. We are excited to be back in the building and we are looking for volunteers to join our ministries. Do you have an interest in video production? Join our audio visual team. Do you love working with children? Join our youth ministry. Do you enjoy interacting with people? Join our usher board. We have many opportunities here at St. John's and we welcome you to join. Please call the church office and let us know your interests and we will partner you with the ministry. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425 436 6308 access code 312522 join pastor wallace and the saint john's family for our wednesday evening bible study at this time we will continue this lively conversation by zoom at 7 p.m be sure to have signed up to receive our email so you are added to the weekly invite if you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, mail to the church, or during a drive-by. We are grateful for your giving. May God continue to bless you and your family abundantly in thanks. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. As we continue to pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray for one another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened, and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day.
grateful I know that song. The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. Lift up your hands, Lord, you get And be lifted up the everlasting Lord. Let's sing it like this. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Let's sing Lord, I Yeah. 
How many of us want the Lord to mold us and shape us? How many of us are available for, for our God today? Come on, let's come and sing this song. We want to be available. Hallelujah. For him to
Amen. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Stand on your feet if you don't mind. Amen. Stand on your feet if you don't mind. Stand on your feet if we don't, if you don't mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He did not have to let us live, but I'm so glad that he did. Amen. We welcome each and every one of you that are with us here today. And those that are with us online, we thank God for you. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God, we are thankful and grateful for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you've given us to come to your house of worship one more time. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Have your way, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray even now, Lord, that you will move by your spirit. Move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Have your way from the pulpit to the pew, from the front door to the back door. God, move like you want to move. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen, amen. Our morning scripture comes from the book of Romans, that letter, that epistle to the church in Rome, uh, the eighth chapter, beginning with the first verse, Romans 8, beginning with verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto our God. We shall be led in our morning hymn this morning by our music ministry.
Hallelujah. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Good morning, Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr. and the St. John's family, we thank all who came out to the drive-by yesterday. A special thank you to all the volunteers. We're blessed and grateful for your dedication to make our Saturday drive-bys a great event. St. John's Vacation Bible School will be the third week in August. Additional details will be shared in the coming weeks. Summer concerts are back here at St. John's. Join us every Friday evening in July for a free outdoor concert. Bring family and friends to enjoy a night of great music and fellowship. St. John's is excited to host an outdoor church service during the summer months. The date and time will be announced shortly. We have an amazing program for our seniors, Seniors in Technology. This will be a four-week class covering different aspects of technology. Learn how to use your personal devices and keep up with the fast-paced digital world. Topics will include how to use laptops, desktops, getting comfortable with mobile devices, communication through social media, and virtual communication such as Zoom and other platforms, as well as protecting yourself from online threats. Classes will be Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. beginning July 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th in the Fellowship Hall. We look forward to seeing you. Join us every Sunday morning in July and August at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let's gather and study the Word together. We are excited to be back in the building and we are looking for volunteers to join our ministries. Do you have an interest in video production? Join our audio visual team. Do you love working with children? Join our youth ministry. Do you enjoy interacting with people? join our usher board. We have many opportunities here at St. John's and we welcome you to join. Please call the church office and let us know your interests and we will partner you with the ministry. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dialing number is 425 Four three six six three zero eight. Access code three one two five two two. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our Wednesday evening Bible study. At this time, we will continue this lively conversation via Zoom at seven p.m. Be sure to have signed up to receive our email so you are added to the weekly invite. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, mail to the church, or during a drive-by. We are grateful for your giving. May God continue to bless you and your family abundantly in thanks. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. As we continue to pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray for one another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened, and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day.
Amen. We're grateful for each and every one of you that pressed their way today to be with us in service. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for those who are joining us online. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate the opportunity to share together one with another in God's service. If there are any visitors in the house today, would you please stand? We just want to acknowledge you. We don't ask you to say anything. We just want to acknowledge your presence in the sanctuary with us today. Are there any visitors here? Would you please stand? Any visitors? Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and joining with us today on behalf of myself and the entire St. John's family. We thank God for your presence and we pray that this won't be the last time that you join with us. If you're without a church home, please consider St. John's. Amen. Amen. Let me just also say um, and reiterate two or three of the announcements that went on before you. Don't forget that Friday, starting next Friday, we'll begin our summer series, our summer music series in the parking lot. Amen. And watch this, y'all. Since we're back in the building, we will be having summer music series, Rain or Shine. If it's shining out, we'll be outside. If it's raining out, we're going to come right on into the fellowship hall and still continue. Amen. So every Friday during the months of July and August, please come and be a part of that. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Also, let me say this. Don't forget seniors in technology. My, my brother, my sister, please come out. Seniors in technology. Saturday, the 9th, the 16th the 23rd and the 30th, please come to the sanctuary at 10 a.m. or rather the fellowship hall so that you can get free instruction. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 On how to build your technology portfolio, how to understand what it is we do, how to understand how to stay away from certain things. Amen. Can I be honest with y'all? I'm not sure of how many of you received a, uh, a text message or received a message not too long ago, but there was a message that went out to the membership of St. John's Baptist Church that said that pastor is away and out of town and desires for you to do something discreetly for him. After that, watch this, they sent out text messages and they said, would you please go purchase four Visa gift cards? so that we can give out to people. Had all of this stuff in the, in, the, uh, in the text message and then closed it off by saying, Pastor Sean T. Wallace. Can I tell y'all how, how technology has, has moved and how people have become more sophisticated and how they try to scam other folks. And so we wanna make sure that you understand that Pastor Wallace would never do that. Amen. If I, if I needed you to do something for me, I am not afraid to come to you and ask you, can you do something for me? So anytime you see something like that, you could automatically say, that ain't the pastor. Right. No, no, he wouldn't do that. All right. So we want to come on out so that you could avoid some of these type of scams. And this is, isn't it a shame that people today would scam the church? Amen. It is, it is a shame before God, no fear or anything that some of these folks have to try to scam God and God's people. So please come out and be a part of that. Also on July 30th, somebody say July 30th. July 30th. We will also be having our, what is it called? Our youth cookout, I guess. Amen. We're having a youth cookout at the Fellowship Deaconry. Amen. <laughs> Come on and make sure you become a part, be a part of that. We gotta, we gonna swim, we gonna have music, we gonna play games, and we sure enough gonna eat, amen? And it's for all of our young people, all of our young people and their parents, y'all are certain welcome to come, and you're certainly welcome to invite somebody to be a part of that fellowship, amen? Amen. Y'all awfully quiet today, y'all quiet today. <laughs> Let me take a, a, a pulse of the room. Are y'all breathing? Amen. Because if you're breathing, the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Is not God worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? He's worthy. Jesus is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I believe the Lord gave me the right message for today. Amen. 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 At this time, it's prayer time. If you desire prayer, we ask you to stand on your feet. And if you are comfortable enough to come to the altar and you desire to come to the altar, you can certainly come to the altar and pray. We're going to ask Deacon Jerry Carey if he would come and lead us in our altar call this morning.
us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We thank you because it's always great to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we pray first of all for all who are sick among us today. Father, both here and those that are shut in at home, those in nursing homes and hospitals, Father, we lift them up to you. Father, heal their bodies. Give them a touch from you. We know that you are the chief physician. And Father, we just pray that you restore their health. Comfort them, Father, we pray. And then, Father, we know that there are those among us who are maybe traveling out of the state on our nation's highways. We know that some of us have relatives in distant areas. In fact, there are some brothers and sisters from our body who are already on the highway and they are traveling hundreds of miles over the next few days. Father, we pray that they would stay alert, that you would pre protect them from seen and unseen dangers and bring them safely back home into their separate houses. And Father, we pray for our pastor. We thank you for him, for he is a truly a gift to this body. And Father, we pray that you would bless not only him, but his family, his parents. Father, we, we thank you for them. And Father, we, we thank you for the message that you've placed on his heart to share with us today. And may we not just be hearers of your word, but doers as well. And then, Father, we think of our president, our vice president, and our new member of the Supreme Court, Mrs. Jackson. Father, she has a task before her. But we know that one individual can make a difference. And Father, we pray that she would make a mighty difference in this Supreme Court. And Father, we just again thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you for this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
so many wonderful blessings and so
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to give God some praise for every mountain. He's brought us over and from every valley. He's brought us through for every blessing. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise for the music ministry. Amen. 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 That's Sister Lisa. That's my sister. Amen. We we grew up in church together. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I see her sister out here too, Teresa. Amen. God bless. Can I tell y'all, talk about a gifted family. I remember growing up when they were children, all of the sisters and brothers played instruments. All of them sang, amen, and they were just always been a blessing to the body of Christ. And we're grateful for you coming and singing along with our ministry today, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Ain't God all right? Amen, amen, amen. The book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 6, uh, verses 12 and 13. Leviticus chapter 6, whoo, verses 12 and 13. Ah, uh, God. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. 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 Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning. He shall arrange the burnt offering on it and shall burn it the fat of the peace offerings. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually, it shall not go out. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. I want to talk from this thought this morning, don't let the fire burn out. Don't let the fire burn out. God, we're grateful and we are thankful for this day and this time of sharing. Sit us down, Lord, that you might stand up. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, shape us, make us, break us if you have to, Lord. But whatever you do, use us for your service. Some might be saved, others might be revived. Pray this prayer in the name of he who died one Friday evening, but rose triumphantly Sunday morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let all of God's people say, amen. Don't let the fire burn out. One night, a church in a small town caught fire, burned down to the ground. While the building was burning, many of the people that lived in the town stood around and watched the church burn. The pastor had been called, and as he drove up to the burning church, he noticed that there were many people standing outside that used to be members of the church. Parked his car, got out, approached one of the men that he hadn't seen for quite some time in the church. He said to the man, sir, I haven't seen you in church in quite some time. Sarcastically, the man responded to the pastor saying, that's because I haven't seen this church on fire in a while. Sadly, there seems to be some validity to the sarcastic response that the man in the story gave to the pastor. It seems like something has happened that has caused many of our churches to allow the fire to be burned out. I'd like to blame it all on the pandemic, but unfortunately, even pre-pandemic, some of our churches let their fire burn out. There used to be a burning fire on the inside of the church. We used to be excited about coming to church. 
We used to be eager to get to the house of God. We couldn't wait to come and lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We couldn't wait to come and praise our God. We couldn't wait to fellowship with the saints. We couldn't wait to hear the songs of Zion, to hear a word from the Lord and to feel the presence of our God. I mean, after going through everything that we've gone through, there was no place like church to come and lay down your burdens, get recharged and refilled, reinvigorated, renewed, restored, and even rejuvenated. And we know, or we knew rather, if we could just get in God's presence, that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. In his presence, God could make ways out of no ways and turn situations around and lift up our heavy burdens and regulate our minds and remove those things that were bound within our hearts. We look forward to meeting God in the place where God said that God would meet his people. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal the land. And when we got here, we would anxiously anticipate a move of God. We would look forward to something happening. We knew that healing was in the house. We knew that deliverance was in the house. We knew restoration was in the house. All because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords met us in the house. We didn't mind entering to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We didn't mind being thankful unto him and blessing his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. And can I testify, the Lord is still good. The Lord is still making ways. The Lord is still turning things around. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Oh, but sisters and brothers, something seemed to happen. Like in the story, uh, that, that would make it more enjoyable to see the church burn down all because the church stopped burning up. And one of the things that seems to have happened and has been exacerbated by this pandemic is that the fire that once burned on the inside of the church appears to have burned out. I don't know if it's just me, but having been away from the church building for so long, seems to have people just going through the motions. We, we got comfortable with YouTube and Facebook Live. We got comfortable with not having to get up and get dressed and leave the house in order to be in worship. We got comfortable with being entertained in the privacy of our homes. And the longer that we were isolated, the easier it was for people to lose interest in corporate worship, in fellowshipping with the saints, in giving God the praise, and in giving God the best of our service. And as a result, the overall excitement for the worship experience seems to have faded and when that happens the fire that we once had will burn down to where it's nothing but ashes and a lump of coal sadly my brothers and sisters it appears like the thrill is gone the newness has worn off i knew i wasn't gonna get any amen so i the, the, the excitement is no more seems like our fire has burned out Evangelist Gypsy Smith was speaking here in America at a large gathering of Christians when he was in his 80s. During his sermon, he preached with such passion and enthusiasm and fervor, the audience would have guessed he was in his 20s or 30s. After the service, a young pastor approached him and asked this elderly saint this question, Brother Smith, I respectfully ask how you preach like you preach tonight at your age. Gypsy Smith's reply was later turned into the lyrics for a well-beloved Christian song. Young man, I've never gotten over the wonder of it all. 
The problem with too many believers is that we've gotten over it. It appears that we've allowed our fire to burn out because we've simply gotten over it. We've gotten over coming into God's house and lifting up our hands to give God glory. We've gotten over saying, God, I thank you for another day's journey. We've gotten over being in God's presence and being in the presence of others and wanting to give God our all. Everything seems to take precedence over worship. We show up late, if we come at all. We sit and spectate and don't participate. We're more concerned about everything other than the main thing. We complain about everything. Service is too long. The choir didn't sing my song. The music is too loud. The preacher wasn't good enough. We do more talking than we do anything else. And when the people in the church have allowed their fire to be extinguished, then the fire that should be burning in the church goes out. And when the people in the church have allowed their fire to be extinguished and it goes out, um, when the people have no fire, then the church will have no fire. And if the church has no fire, it becomes more fascinating for people to see a, per a church burn down all because ain't nothing on the inside burning up. I I I'm simply trying to say, it ought to be so hot in here yes. until we ought to be burning up. Yes. Sunday school ought to be burning up. Yes. Praise and worship ought to be burning up. Yes. Morning prayer ought to be burning up. Singing the hymns ought to be burning up. The music ministry ought to be burning up. The preacher ought to be burning up. The people ought to be burning up. And you know what happens. You know what happens when you start burning up, don't you? You start removing the layers of stuff that's making you hot. Um, it, it, uh, it, I, can I tell y'all I, I, I preached a sermon many many years ago it's getting hot in here so take off all your clothes yep and watch this and the people when I said it looked at me the same way y'all looking at me I wish I had somebody and then I needed to explain to them, I wish I had somebody, that when you show sure enough get hot, you'll start taking off the stuff that encumbers you from being able to do what you do. I cannot be honest with y'all. If some of y'all are just loosening up your tie, if some of y'all are just opening up a button on your shirt, if, if some of y'all are just getting a little loose for God, God can burn up on the inside. Some of us just too stiff. Wish I had somebody. Some of us just too rigid. Some of us just too stuck. But can I tell you, if somebody would just open up and let God, God is able to do exceeding abundantly. What, what, I'm, what I'm simply trying to say, brothers and sisters, is if, if, we, if we walk around with a mask on before God and those trench, coaches, uh, trench coats on covering all our stuff before God, God knows we ain't serious about a change. Testing one, two. Because the only reason you really need to cover up it's because you don't want man to see. God already knows. The church, the church has to be rekindled. There needs to be a fire for God. And never let it burn out. 
In other words, uh, that, that's my daughter. My daughter likes this quote. Church, we got to keep the fire yeah. burning. Don't, don't let the fire burn out. According to our text for consideration, the first thing that we've got to do is we must prepare for the fire. Somebody say prepare. In verse 8 of the 6th chapter of Leviticus, God tells Moses, prepare Aaron and his sons to receive the fire. God says, this is how you offer the burnt offerings. And these are the instructions on how I want the offerings to be sacrificed in the tabernacle. You see, in Exodus, God gives the instructions on how to build the altar. But in Leviticus, God gives the instructions on how to use the altar. And you can't receive the fire if you're not prepared for the fire. There's always preparation before realization. Before we can fully experience the blessings of God, my brother, my sister, we've got to be prepared. First part of preparation is getting in right fellowship with God. Y'all keep walking. I'm, 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 I'm going to tread, tread, tread slow today. Um, it, it requires us spending time with God. It, it requires us communing with God. It requires us seeking the presence of God. In other words, if we want to see the fire burning, then we got to put down the phone sometime. Yeah. <laughs> we got to shut the ringer off sometime. We got to get in our secret closet where it ain't nobody but us and God and spend some time with the Lord. That, that, that's, that's why we need to prepare ourselves before we come to service. Prepare ourselves before we get on the premises. Prepare ourselves before we come into the... Can I, can I be honest with y'all? You know, people that come to church with a nasty attitude is because they ain't prepared themselves to come to church. People that always got something negative to say is because they didn't prepare to come to church. I wish I had somebody. People, people who got a bad disposition all the time, it's because you ain't prepared for church. My brother, my sister, you ain't come to church for me. You ain't come to church for nobody else. You came to church to give God glory, to lift him up and to magnify him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. We, we, when we prepare ourselves, we don't need a praise team to pump us up. When we prepare ourselves, we don't desire to be entertained. When we prepare ourselves, we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Songwriter said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. My brothers and sisters, we've got to work on our relationship with God so that we won't let the fire burn out. All right. Um, there was a letter written by a relatively new Christian to a person whose life had been influenced by her greatly. She actually lists a dozen qualities she found contagious in the life of this older Christian. Listen to some of what she wrote. She said, I saw in you a thriving spirit. I could tell you a growing person, and I like that. I saw you had strong self-esteem. I saw that you live by your convictions and priorities and not just by convenient self-pleasure and financial gain. I felt a depth of love and concern as you listened to me without judgment. You understood me or at least tried to. You sympathized and empathized. You celebrated with me. You dis uh, demonstrated kindness and generosity towards me. You were willing to go against the grain. And because of that, I'm here today as a Christian. I gave my life to Christ because I saw the Christ in you. 
My God, that woman was on fire for God. And she never let the fire. I wonder how many folks that's their testimony. All right, let me. <laughs> After we have prepared for the fire, we need to remember who provides the fire. Okay, in the text this morning, we see God telling Moses that the fire must be kept burning. Somebody say, keep it burning. Keep it burning. If the fire is to be kept burning, then the fire must have already started burning. Don't miss that, y'all. Um, because you can't keep something that hasn't been started and too much of the problem is we expect people to keep what has never been started that, that, that's why we know that what's in you will come because whatever was started on the inside of you will at some point or another come yeah when we prepare ourselves and do what god wants us to do we don't have to worry about where the fire's coming from. We won't have to worry about manufacturing a fire. We won't have to worry about making our own fire because God will provide the fire. The burning on the inside doesn't start with you. It doesn't start with me. It starts with God. The Bible says, behold, I stand at your door and knock. The Bible says that none come unless the Father draw them. Jeremiah said that his word was in him like a burning. Shut up in his bones. And my brothers and sisters, can I be honest? I know, I know I'm at the St. John's Church in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And I got to be honest with you, I try to keep my composure. I do, y'all. I try to keep it to myself. But something on the inside stirs its way. And for some reason, I just can't keep it to myself. When I think about who woke me up this morning, when I think about the one who started me on my way, when I think about how he's kept me and provided for me and takes care of me, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Man, I thank God for saving me. I want it. We need to prepare for the fire. Somebody say prepare. We need to realize who provides the fire. Somebody say provides. And then we need to maintain a perpetual fire. All right, the fire needs to be perpetual. The fire needs to be ongoing. All right, uh, God tells Moses the fire should never go out. All right, in chapter 6, verse 9, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. Chapter 6, verse 12, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. Chapter 6, verse 13, a fire shall always be burning on the altar, and it should never go out. God commanded Moses not to let the fire burn out. And I stopped by <clears throat> this morning. To let you know that the same applies to us. <clears throat> we're, we're never to let the fire burn out. If we let the fire burn out, people's lives won't be changed. Mm -hmm. If we let the fire burn out, our children will continue in a downward spiral. If we let the fire burn out, fear Injustice, shootings will continue to be the news of the day. If we let the fire burn out, families will continue to fall apart. If we let the fire burn out, folks will stop giving their all to the master. The hungry will stay hungry. The naked will stay naked. 
the homeless will stay homeless and our people will continue to perish. If we let the fire burn out, church doors will continue to close. <laughs> then we'll come into church Sunday after Sunday. Business as usual. No change. I'm done. No transformation. No revitalization. No rejuvenation. People of God, we can't afford to let the fire burn out. We must be a church that is on fire. We must keep the fire burning because God wants us to worship him with consistent devotion and not sporadic enthusiasm. If we worship only when we feel like it, then it ain't really worship. Because we don't worship based on how we feel. We worship based on what we know. And what we know is that God is worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Jesus is worthy to be praised. I dare somebody in here to lift up your hands and give God praise. Because if you can't praise him now, don't go to heaven. Because they tell me in heaven all day and all night, the angels, oh God, are worshiping our God. The 20 and 4 elders have thrown down their crowns. The four beasts who are around the altar praise our God. We need to keep this fire burning. So the question is how do we keep it burning? It's right here in the text. Each morning, a priest would put on his robe, approach the altar, and clean out the ashes. He'd then collect the ashes and take them outside the camp and would leave them there. If we don't want to let our fire burn out, we got to learn how to remove the ashes. The way that we keep the fire clean is by removing the ashes. Ashes will help keep the fire burning dirty. Ashes need to be cleaned or else the fire won't burn well. Ashes come from what won't completely in the fire notice the ashes are collected the ashes are removed the ashes are discarded there's some stuff that we need to collect some stuff we need to remove some stuff we need to discard so it doesn't come back in again Ashes of sin, ashes of selfishness, ashes of deceit, ashes of defilement, ashes of corruption, the ashes of anything that's not like God need to be removed and discarded. My sisters and my brothers, I don't know who, I don't know what, your ashes may be, but you need to discard it, get rid of it, remove it in the name of Jesus. Shout yeah! Remove the ashes. But then it also says, if we don't want to let our fire burn out, we need to replace the wood. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The fire was intended to be daily burned, and the sacrifices were offered daily every morning, in the evening, and every morning the priest had to remove the old wood and replace it with new wood. 
The wood was used to keep the fire burning. And every morning, ah, the wood needed to be replaced. I'm done this morning. Uh, but saints, if we don't want our fires to burn out, we need to replace the wood every morning with fresh wood. Every day when you read your word, that's fresh wood. When we open up our mouths to pray, that's fresh wood. When we give God glory, that's fresh wood. When we worship him, that's fresh wood. When we give God the best of our service, that's fresh wood. When we put God first in our lives, that's fresh. Fresh wood. And this is what I like about a fire is that um, if our fires are burning, it won't be long until somebody else catches on. You ever look down your entire row and ain't nobody moved? Okay, I will. You ever look down your row and ain't nobody moved? If everybody on your row, everybody, that's bad English, but it's good theology. If everybody is cold as ice on your row, I ain't gonna talk about nobody else. That means you ain't got the fire. Don't let anybody cause the fire to burn out. No. Don't let anything cause the fire to burn out. Don't allow circumstances to cause the fire to burn. Don't let this world cause the fire to burn out because the fire should be so intense it should be inextinguishable that nothing can cause it to burn out don't let the fire burn out and watch this y'all it don't matter how young or old you are What did Caleb tell Joshua? I wish I had somebody. I'm stronger today. At 80. So I know some of y'all 80, but you could be just as strong today at 80. <laughs> Testing one, two. At 90. Because it's really all about what's on the inside of you. And I don't know how you feel, but you ever, I don't care how old you are, how sick you've been, there have been times when the strength of the Lord stands up on the inside of you. I wish I had somebody. Y'all, see, I, I, knew, I knew that there'd be some witnesses. That God's strength, y'all remember, strength stands up. Don't let your fire, everybody standing, don't let your fire burn out can I oh man I'm, I'm just can I just talk with y'all for real today if you in a place and you feel like because of that place your fire has burned out you need to remove yourself from that place testing one two three can I speak for myself I don't want to be anywhere where God can't be God in me. Yeah. 
And watch this. I ain't asking everybody to run up and down the aisles and run around the church. But can I tell you something? You got to show some sign. All right. There, there may be somebody here under the sound of my voice. Yeah. Before I even get to asking anybody if they want to become a member of the church, with every head bowed and every eye closed, there may be somebody here who may have let their fire burn down. And, and it might even be at the point where it feels like it could be burning out. But before, before you, you let that fire burn out, let's just pray this morning. If that's you and nobody's watching because, you know, if you, if you got to watch people, something wrong. Because this isn't between you and them. This is between them and God. If you're here today and your fire is burning down. And you said, but pastor, I don't want it to burn out. Just slip your hand in the air. I just want to pray. I just want to pray with you. I see. Oh, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. The Lord sees you. I see you. I see you. Amen. I see you. God, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you. We, we thank you because you have been good to us. You prepared us for the fire. You provided the fire. And you expect a perpetual fire. So God, I pray even now for those who are here under the sound of my voice who need to remove some ashes, who need to replace that old wood with fresh new wood. Touch them now, God, I pray, from the crown of their head even now to the sole of their feet. Increase in them, God. Strengthen them now, God, to do what it is that you require for them to do that they might maintain a perpetual fire. God, I pray even now that you move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Touch us from the crown of our head even now to the sole of our feet. Allow us to be a church that's on fire for you so that we can then spread this fire out in the community, out in the world. That someone would see our witness of you and cry out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. And any way you bless us, God will give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, amen. 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 There may be somebody here under the sound of my voice. You're not a member of any church where Jesus is Lord. The Bible is the instruction manual. The Holy Spirit leads and guides all the way. If that's you, why don't you come on down and give the brother in your hand, but most importantly, give God your heart. If you feel the Lord speaking to you today, give the brother in your hand. Most importantly, give God your heart. Is there one today? Is there one? I wouldn't wait. Tomorrow's not promised to you. I think we talked about that at the eight o'clock, uh, 7 o'clock call this morning. Tomorrow's not promised to you. So we need to ask, Lord, to give us the wisdom to make best use of the day we have. Is there one today? Is there one? I wouldn't wait. If you feel the Lord speaking to your heart, I wouldn't wait. Can I be honest with you? Who cares who's looking? Ain't nobody in here got a heaven to send you to nor a hell to put you in. Amen. So if you feel the Lord speaking to you, forget about them. Amen. And do what the Lord has told you to do today. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. Amen. Amen. The brethren are going back to their seat. Everyone else is sitting. Amen. Are there any people here that uh, have joined the church? You've been baptized. You've gone through the new members class, but you have yet to receive the right hand of fellowship. If you're here today, please uh, meet me here in the front of the ser uh, front of the church. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. All right, amen, amen. All right, amen, amen. Amen. Come on, give it up to God one more time. Amen. Can I tell y'all that I just love how God operates? This new member here joined during the pandemic. 
let, let, <laughs> amen. Stayed with us even when we didn't. I'm, I'm talking about early in the pandemic. Stayed with us when we couldn't get in the building, weren't in the building. Amen. And still remain faithful. Still came. Still participated. Amen. Went through the new members class and now stands before us today. Everybody, all of the leaders, all of the leaders, please stand. All the leaders, deacons, trustees, all the leaders, would you please stand? You know, normally what we would do is we'd all come around here and shake her hand. But y'all know COVID has changed things. The pandemic has changed things. So I am going to offer the right hand of fellowship on behalf of all of the leadership and the membership here at St. John's Baptist Church. We're grateful that you allowed the Lord to send you this way. We thank God for your presence. And we look forward to what God is going to do through you here at St. John's. God bless you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, come on. Put your hands together one more time. One more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. As we prepare to, to move into our communion, amen, as we prepare to receive communion today. All right, we prepare to receive communion today. I know where this scripture is good now because we taught on it on Wednesday. Amen. Talked about communion on Wednesday, right? Because we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. For those interested, we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. Uh, we are right about at chapter 12 now. We just finished chapter 11. Uh, so we're going into chapter 12. I think we're getting ready to start talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, my Lord. Amen. So y'all come on in. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus... On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God, we're grateful and thankful for this opportunity to come to the table once again. God, we pray even now that this would be a time where we would do some self-reflection. Look, look at ourselves to see where we are and yet where we need to be with respect to you. God, we're thankful because it was your body that was broken for us. It was your, your blood that was shed just for us so that we would have the right to the tree of life. And you reminded us that as often as we do it, we show forth our remembrance for what you did for us on Calvary. God, if nobody else says it, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. Thank you for how you bridged the gap between us and God. Thank you, God, for how you sent Jesus to, to do the bridging and how he suffered, bled, and died just for our pardon. Thank you. Again, God, we pray, and we're grateful that early on Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. This is our prayer. We pray now in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, amen. Amen. Has everyone received communion that desires to be served today? Everyone, everyone received. All right. On that evening, Jesus took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. He said, this is my body, broken for many. Take it. Eat all of it. After they ate together, they took the, the wine. Jesus said, this is my blood, which is shed for many. Take it. Drink ye all of it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare to leave this place, but never from the presence of our God. Amen. The Bible says that they went out singing a hymn, and we don't know what hymn they sung, but this is what I know. I know that we've been redeemed. We've been bought with a price that Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for us, and the power that comes from the blood, it still reaches to the highest mountain, 
and it still flows to the lowest valley. brother and sister as we prepare to leave this place but never from God's presence ask you if you're coming today and you have a gift that you'd like to share amen with this ministry most of us have already given online we've mailed in our gifts we've shared our gifts but if you are here today and you desire to share your gift there are ways to give that are posted on the screen but you could also give if you have a tangible gift in your hand you could also give on your way out the door we have trustees at all the doors you can pull your offering out and you can certainly give it today and we will be grateful. And let me just share with you that when you give, you are given to good ground. Amen. This is good ground here. God, we pray even now that you bless every gift and bless every giver. We pray that no one go wanting for supporting ministry. We pray even now, Lord, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, that you will bless us and keep us. Help us, Lord, never to let the fire burn out. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let every heart say, Amen, Amen, and thank God. <laughs>